Hello and welcome to Behind the Scenes of TF2 Train Trouble 2. In this video, we will explore the creation of the video and the problems that occurred while making it. As the video is longer and more complicated than the AdWords Gmod video, I've split this video into different chapters in hopes of keeping it coherent and easy to follow. It goes without saying that TF2 Air 2 was a massive inspiration for this project, and I would like to thank Ethiomod for all the laughs he has given us throughout the years. So without further ado, let's take a peek behind the scenes. We'll start with the maps. In order to understand why I decided to make custom maps for this project, we have to take a look at how I filmed the original TF2 train trouble. The first train trouble was, for the most part, filmed in a green screen map, where I used the Half-Life 2 Episode 2 train props to build the train with. Now, Anyone who has ever played Garish mod for more than 5 minutes knows that trying to pose a white doll inside a prop is very difficult, as you can accidentally grab the prop instead of the white doll and screw up the entire scene, and this is even if the prop has a proper collision model, which most of them do not. Keep in mind that this was before Garish mod had the persistent option available, as the video was filmed in Garish mod 12. The white doll mover was also not available. Now, the easy solution to all this would have been to weld the train prop to the map itself, and while that works, you could still grab the train prop by accident, but at least it would stay put. But it was still very annoying having the fist gun grabbing the prop instead of the white doll I was aiming for. Now, another solution would have been to make a custom map and then just place the prop down like a prop static, but I had no idea how to make maps for the source engine back then. Fortunately, I found a Ignore Fiskon tool on the old garrismod.org website that did everything I needed it to. Using it on a prop would cause the Fiskon to completely ignore it. Problem solved. That is, until Garrismod updated and the tool broke. Back to the welding tool. Another reason for a custom map is that working in a full green screen map quickly gets rough on the eyes. Plus, the chroma keying in Vegas is not 100% accurate and it basically removes all the green color from the video. This is why the blue color in the original video is... just off. I don't really know how to describe it. Plus, the train station maps I used back then were... okay, but they were really small and you couldn't really do a whole lot of with them. The first one just kinda ends out of nowhere once you exit the train area. Also, since I made that video, I've used public transportation a lot more, and it's given me a better idea of how these places actually work. So, um, let's dive into the first map, GM Train Station, or GMTT2 Train Station as the released version is called, because there's already a map on the workshop called GM Train Station, and I'm not sure how Garry's mod deals with map conflicts, but I don't think it's gonna be pretty. Anyway. The first map is very simple, it's, well, a train station. There's not really anything fancy going on here. Of course, the map being made primarily for recording means that if you leave that area, you'll quickly find the map coming apart at the seams, especially around the 3D skyboxes. I kinda suck at making those, so just stay away from the edges. There are a few things worth mentioning. The doors to the bathrooms do open, because I originally planned to have the engineer be thrown into them after he got his ticket. Like, the ticket guy would just throw it at him, and he would just fly into the bathroom and explode. However, I couldn't get the scene to work the way I intended, so they go unused. Going under the map, you'll find a box with the monitor texture. I didn't feel like decompiling the TV screen model just to give it one texture, so, I decided to just set up an RT camera, pointing at the texture and hammer. This also has the benefit of customizing what the camera can show in-game. You can also control the clock's pointers by using the console. I'll show the commands on screen now. For a bit of technical stuff, you may have noticed in the video that the windows outside seems to be reflecting some buildings. However, this is actually a bug. If you look in the opposite direction, there's only forest, so it's actually showing the buildings that's like in front of the building. The reason for this happening is because of a vis bug with the source engine. Now, this doesn't happen in the release Steam Workshop version, because I updated my compiler tools in between, which seems to have fixed this issue. I'm not really sure why it was happening in the first place, but yeah, that's the source engine for you. 
One last thing, you can find an early beta version of this map in the source files. Anyway, on to the next map, GM Train, or GM TT2 Train as I had to call the released version to avoid a name conflict on the workshop, just in case. Now where to start with this one? I know the construction of the train looks relatively simple, but trust me, making it was anything but. I guess we'll start with a quick tour of the map itself. The train has 7 cars including the engine. Each car is unique with different seat arrangements and styles. There's also an empty car that I didn't use, I just made it just in case I needed to do something that required a lot of room, but yeah, it goes unused. The seats are custom models made by me. I tried to make them using brushes, but there are no good seat textures included in any of the Source Engine games I own, so I figured that since I'm gonna be using custom textures anyway, I might as well try to make a model to go with them. The front of the train was originally gonna look a lot more modern. There's an early prototype included in the source files. And while I do like the design, especially the window, I figured it would probably fit in better if it looked more like something that came out of Team Fortress 2. So I grabbed one of the train props from TF2, scaled it up and put it in the front. I eventually remade the front using brushes instead of the model because of light mapping issues. I've actually gotten a few comments asking what train the map is based upon and well, the answer is whatever the TF2 trains are based on. The moving backgrounds are dynamic and can be changed using the map's control panel. To access it, go to the engine car and no clip through the front. Keep going and you will eventually come into a part of the map with a white cube. On that cube are some text displays that describe the different background styles you can change to. Press the use key on them to change it. These backgrounds themselves has a very long and very convoluted backstory on how I made them, but maybe we should take things in order and let's start with the first problem I had with this map. The windows. If you've taken a good look at the map, you may have noticed that some of the windows has odd shadows in the corners, and that's because the source engine apparently doesn't like rounded windows. Now I know what you're thinking, Delta, surely the Source Engine can handle a few triangle brushes in the corners of a square window, right? No, it cannot. I don't know what the hell is causing VPSP to have a stroke over this, because in my 10 years of mapping for Quake style engines, I have never seen anything like this before. Now, I did manage to fix it by setting them to detailed brushes instead of world brushes, but because of how many of them there are, it ended up using about 85% of the allowed detailed brushes memory just for this. Yeah, the detailed brushes are referred to as water indices for some reason in the compiler. I don't know why, and I'm not sure I want to know why. Anyway, now for the biggest obstacle I had with this map, the backgrounds. I'm sure many of you have seen scrolling textures before on maps like CTF Conroy, or one of the many train maps that's popped on the workshop, and while I could have used one of those maps, they all have one thing in common. They only use scrolling texture as a background. And I wanted something more. I wanted moving terrain and props. I wanted it to look like there was actually a world beyond the train. Unfortunately, the source engine and the tools I used back then were not up to the challenge. My original plan was to slap some displacement on a funk train and have them seamlessly loop by the windows. But there was an issue. The source engine does not allow displacements to be dynamic. 
they must be static world rushes and you can't pound them to any moving objects. But no worries, I told myself, I'll just make a train out of normal brushes and then pound them to a funk train instead, creating a small loop of scenery just like other video games do. That's when I encountered the second issue. You see, while it is possible to pound a brush to a funk train and loop it, it does not loop perfectly. As this demonstration shows, a small offset occurs on loop, and it seems to be random every time, which means I can't move the brush to compensate for the offset. So yeah, clearly using brushes was not the answer. So I decided to try and make an animated model to serve as my background. I jumped into Blender and made a small animated test model. That's when I encountered the third issue. The Blender source tools at the time did not really support animated models. Sure, you could make and export animations from an existing model, but making a custom model with animations would cause them to break on export. This has been fixed in the new version for Blender 2.8, but back when I'm working on this map, I, we were still running Blender 2.79. And all of this is the reason why I made modding the Source Engine 2. Right, so animated terrain was out of the question. I would have to settle for scrolling textures. But that didn't mean I would have to settle for just one texture. So I made the aforementioned backgrounds to add some variety to the scenes. I then decided to use the Funk Train experiment from before, but this time using props instead of brushes. I actually made a more advanced version of this system that would allow the game to pull random props from a pool. But for the final map, I went with a more simple system to avoid overloading the game as the map was already starting to hit some of the source engine limits, namely the detail process on the windows. And that just about does it for this map. Let's take a look at the video itself. I'll skip over scenes that don't really have anything interesting going on in them or happening while I make them. The beginning music was supposed to just be a placeholder until I could find something more fitting, but I couldn't so I just decided to keep it. Here in the first scene, if you look closely you can see that none of the white dolls have any shadows underneath them. That's because I screwed up the shadow settings in the map editor, causing the shadows to be projected onto the wall instead of the floor. It's not really visible in the final video, but eh, there's a fun bit of trivia for you. As I mentioned before, the engineer was supposed to get thrown into the bathrooms when receiving his ticket in this scene, but I couldn't work it out how to film it properly. Again, if you look closely, you can see that the demo man has a shadow in one scene, but in the next one it's just gone. That's because I re-recorded the demo man standing by the trash can after I fixed the shadows. I didn't really record the other clips as the lack of a shadow doesn't really impact them in any significant way. If you look in the background, you can see a Half-Life 2 citizen standing looking at the clock. This is actually a prelude to a scene that didn't make it into the final version. I'll show it now. The reason why this scene didn't make it into the final version is, well, it didn't really flow well with the f video flow I had going at the moment. I had to redo this chase scene a few times, due to the lighting and the car physics not being very cooperative. That's why the lighting changes so dramatically from one shot to the next. Here's what the old version looked like. And here we come across our first official easter egg in the video. The heavy and scout pair from the first train trouble can be seen standing on the platform waiting for the train, along with many other characters. I'm not going to point out every easter egg, but there are a few that may need a bit of explaining. Like this scene where the sniper is looking at the counter strike source hostage. For some reason, some of the hostages have the letters DSB on their clothing. I don't know if this is supposed to mean anything in the Counter-Strike universe, but here in Denmark, DSB stands for Danske Selskabsbaner, which roughly translates to Danish Railroads, and is the company responsible for the majority of train traffic here in Denmark. As with any public service, seeing any employees walking around is considered an anomaly. I forgot to remove the ticket from the machine in the background here. Also, the train schedule contains a lot of easter eggs. 
The train names are Half-Life 1 map names and one of the destinations is GM City, which is also the destination of the plane in TF2 Air 2. So there's little reference to that, as if this video needed more references to that. Yes, I know the train is in between the rails, and the reason for that is that I made this train station map before the train map, so I had no idea how big the train was actually gonna be in the game world until I spawned it in. I think it's pretty funny how the train is so big that it needs both rails to fit in, so I just lift it in. The great fight scene took me quite a few tries to get right. I originally tried to use more NPCs and also fiddled around with the Team Fortress 2 game mode add-on for Gmod. I still have some of the old footage from the earlier attempts, so I'll roll that now. The Ticket Medic along with the Train Engineers are recurring characters from the first train travel. When I filmed the first Train Engineer scene, I had no plans to have one of them be a spy. I originally intended for them to have a bit of a rivalry based on their team colors. This is why Blue is speaking to Blue and the two Red Engineers are sitting at the main control panel. The spy idea only came to me about halfway through the video. The heavy vlog scene was something I only added because I wanted to try and animate with a moving camera. I didn't really get to do much of it until the very end because, well, as I said, I'd never tried this kind of animation before, so it took me some time to figure out the best way to do it. I used the real-time playback function of the stop-motion helper to record Heavy smashing the guy's head into the table, along with him turning the camera. If you watch carefully, you can see the background skip when it happens. Jack5 also had the idea of adding a watermark to Heavy's camera. And if you look closely when Heavy is turning the camera, you can see a madcap scout. As, as of the time of recording this, only about two people have noticed it, which... I gotta say, I'm a bit disappointed with you guys. Originally, a different scene would have followed this one, featuring Lewis and Ellis having a discussion with Ellis annoying Lewis into attacking him. I cut this scene because it didn't really fit the flow of the video, and it seemed more like a Gmod freak video than it did a, uh, well, non-Gmod freak video. I don't really know what to call these kind of videos, but yeah, here's what the scene would have looked like. Do you know what suck the heads means? Nope. It's about eating. Cool. I ever tell you about the time Keith and I made fireworks? Now, I didn't know shit about chemistry, but Keith figured gasoline burns. He said he never saw a single ghost except this one time when a ghost stabbed him from behind and took all his money, and he might have just been a homeless guy because he had a robe on with two eyes cut out of his face. Man, if you get your spit thick enough, you see, y'all- Whoa! Whoa! I need some help, guys. You're dead. <laughs> The set piece for that scene was eventually reused in the ticket scene. The engineer fist scene is actually a real recording. The original scene was not very good and with a lot of other cutscenes it kind of broke the flow of the video. So I had to think about doing something different instead. I eventually pieced together a new scene while throwing around ideas with camouflage. I still have the old version, which I'll show now. Not funny.
Nice going, partner. After that scene, I was beginning to feel a bit burned out, so I took a, about a two month long break, lasting from about February to April. During that time I wrote down some more ideas and ordered them in a way to make them flow together as nicely as possible. This is also where I got the idea to have one of the engineers being a spy. There's a lot of unused ideas I wrote down. They weren't used because I either couldn't find the assets I needed for them or... I just couldn't get them to fit into the video no matter what I did. Or I just came out with something better while I was animating. The engineer praying was filmed by attaching a wrench to a wheel, while I controlled the engineer in the background with the fist gun. Ah yes, Fist Bridge EP2, a map from the classic days of Gary's Mod. I've always wanted to use this map in a Gmod video, but the opportunity never really presented itself until now. I knew from the beginning that I wanted a fake crash scene for the train, but I couldn't find any good maps to do it on, so I went looking on the workshop where I found this map again, and I knew now was the time to use it. The map itself is very simple, like many maps made from that era, it just kind of ends out of nowhere. So I had to use the shore model from Half-Life 2 to fill in the blanks. There was a small problem with using this model, however. The prop resizer tool does not work on effects, so I had to spawn it using the prop dynamic create command, and then fit it into the map to the best of my abilities. You might have noticed that in some shots it's missing, that's because I had to do multiple takes to get the fall and explosion correct, and for some reason Garry's mod does not save props created while the console commands. And this brings us to the medic scene. I initially had no idea what to animate with him this time. I knew that I wanted him to come into conflict with the ticket medic, but I wasn't sure how. Fortunately, Jack5 came up with a few ideas and we now have this masterpiece to watch. Also, the medic on the outside has like duct tape his chair to the train if you didn't notice. You might have seen how the lighting changes a bit during this scene. I started filming this with no extra lights in the map, but when I had to bring in the ticket medic, it got a bit too dark for my liking, so I added an extra lamp halfway through the animation. Obviously, this would create quite a bit of contrast between the lighting from the first half and the second half, but I managed to fix it with a bit of color correction in Vegas. The crying baby scene is based directly on a personal experience I had while riding a train once. I was sitting down just minding my own business when I saw a woman sitting next to a baby carriage. And I remember thinking to myself, please don't wake up the baby. And almost immediately she turned to the baby carriage and woke up the baby, who proceeded to scream and cry for the rest of the trip. You might be wondering why the alarm light isn't blinking in this scene. I'll let the video footage speak for itself. Now, you might notice this didn't happen in the beginning of the train crash scene, and I'm fairly sure that's because Gmod was updated in between those two shots, and that update somehow caused the models to freak out whenever dynamic light is turned off. So uh, not much I can do about that. Here's a close look at the gun signs. The space skeleton is a reference to the clear enemy from Sirius Sam. Some of you have been asking why Merasmus turns Soldier into a penguin with the bunny hat on it. This is Merasmus we're talking about. He's not exactly known for being good at visuary. The OB-1 model used here was one I originally made for a Star Wars parody video I was planning. However, due to a lack of good Star Wars content on Gmod Workshop at the time, I had to cancel it as I didn't feel it lived up to my expectations of it. I do still have some footage of it, and I might throw that up on my other channel. As for the model itself, I think the base model came from the Force Unleashed, but I gotta say the model itself is quite bad overall. There are no sleeves, so his hands are just floating in midair, and his face texture just looks really odd. Plus, the HWM treatment I did on it is not with that good. If I ever get around to try to remake that Star Wars video again, I'm probably just gonna start over from scratch. 
These spiral scene is purely there to satisfy my own enjoyment of electric humor. And that pretty much brings us to the end. And yes, I do plan on uploading the credit song soon. The final thing to talk about is the quick shot where the engineer shoots the spy. If you take a close look, you'll notice the characters have very pixelated edges. This is because the scene was partially filmed in a green screen, or in this case a purple pink screen. I couldn't remove the green screen glow from the characters because of the game's anti-aliasing, so I had to disable it while filming this. This overall looks bad, but given how short this shot is, it's not something most people are gonna notice. And that just about does it. The very last idea I had for this was to make a fake trailer that was misleading on purpose, but after having worked on this for almost a year straight, I decided not to do it. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this look behind the scenes. Let me know if you would like to see more of these kind of videos in the future. And uh, I think I'll end this one with all the bloopers I recorded during production. So have a nice day and I'll see you again at some point in the future. Goodbye.
Sam Hill.